Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. This week, a major shakeup in the House. Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy dropped his bid to be the next speaker. We've been going through this campaign, talking to a lot of members, but the one thing I've always said to earn this majority, we're servants. We should put this conference first. And I think there's something to be said for us to unite. We probably need a fresh face. But just hours before, McCarthy was still campaigning. His move mm. caused a flurry of speculation. Here's what we know about one of them. On Tuesday, Republican Representative Walter Jones wrote a letter to his party calling on any candidate to withdraw if, quote, there are any misdeeds he has committed since joining Congress that will embarrass himself. After McCarthy withdrew, Jones had this to say to CNN. I think when a person has uh, been a member of Congress, which is a very sacred duty, quite frankly, in my opinion, and they are uh, elevated to become a leader of a party, it could be either party, Republican or Democrat, that those in leadership must be above reproach. Other Republicans have since echoed his sentiments and rumors of infidelity have surfaced. All right, Jack, was McCarthy being as altruistic as he said, or was he trying to avert a public relations disaster? Well, I don't know of any infidelity with McCarthy. I don't know anything about that, but I am upset with Kevin McCarthy this week. Let's break some news here, Morris. The media, I think, has missed the story. Kevin McCarthy never expected to get to 218 with Republican votes. Everybody knew he would never get there and never get the remains of the extreme right. What he tried to do, and this is what the media doesn't know, he tried to negotiate with Hoyer and Pelosi, and Pelosi and Hoyer offered him the final 20 or 25 votes, but they offered, at, they offered it at a price, and these negotiations went back and forth for almost 24 hours. Finally, McCarthy couldn't meet their demands. He backed out. The reason I'm upset with Kevin is he tried to sell the Republican Party down the drain by negotiating with the other side. And that was, uh, I'm very upset. I'm glad he's not speaker. I think he made the right decision in stepping aside, but I think he should be ashamed of himself. Here's more about the math you were talking about, Jack. Despite the rumors, many have said McCarthy would have had a hard time reaching the 218 votes to solidify his leadership. Even some lawmakers have commented on the fighting within the GOP between the old guard and the far right. Mark, from your perspective as a Democrat, who's likely to win the battle? Oh, I don't know. I don't think anyone can. I don't think there's a single Republican that can legitimately get 218 votes. Probably the only one who could would be Paul Ryan. He would get the number of votes, and then within a week, there'd be people upset with him. Look, there's a tiny wing of the Republican Party. You can call them the Tea Party, the House Freedom Caucus, or you can just call them the people who want to destroy the government. Whatever you want to call them, they do not want government to succeed. They want to shut it down. And here's the problem. Not only do the vast majority of American people don't want the government to be shut down. The majority of Republicans don't want the government to be shut down. Every single time it happens, it harms the Republican Party. Boehner knows this, Paul Ryan knows this, Kevin McCarthy knows this, anyone who knows anything, even Jack knows this, I think. Yeah, no, you're so, right. So, you're right. so there is well, no one. You're right. Who can here's the thing, here's the thing 18. with that, friend gentlemen, that they're anti big government until a hurricane or a, a natural disaster, yeah. you know, hurts their area. Hurts then they area. want the federal here's money. Here's the thing, to come though, in. let me follow up on Mark's point. I agree with 99% of that. We have some rare government around this week, Morris. There's two points, though. One, I think Paul Ryan, and I've talked to him about this a number of times since this has happened, the pressure on him is growing. In the worst way, he doesn't want to do it, because just as Mark said, they would be happy with him only for six days. The problem, though, is that it's going to be ridiculous for him to remain as Ways and Means chairman while the party crumbles around him. Basically, people are saying, Paul, we no longer need you to remain as Ways and Means chairman. So if you want to remain in the House, you pretty much have to take a leadership role. Maybe you don't want to be in the House anymore. This is the dynamic that's starting. That's number one. One, I think it's 50-50 on whether that works. I think what's more likely at this point is Boehner may rescind his, resigna his resignation. He may hold the seat, although he doesn't have to to be speaker. He probably will hold the Ohio seat. I think Boehner will likely drift on for a full year as speaker wow. because there Look, won't be a choice. That may happen. There are, in effect, three parties right now in the United States Congress. There are the Democrats, the Establishment Republicans, and the Tea Party Republicans. Yeah. And in any parliamentary democracy, the two largest parties have to join together. If 
McCarthy was trying to work with Democrats to get a speakership, good for him because the only way the speaker will succeed is by working well, with Democrats. Well, yeah, because Mark, but that's those double deal. And McCarthy was, yeah, well, yeah, that's them. right. That's I'm what all Boehner for did, and he did the right thing. You, no, well, regardless, no, no. regardless of what happens in the House, at least one Republican presidential nominee says, so what? This is an inside Washington, D.C. game that I have to tell you the truth, Jake, nobody in America could care less about. Um, they don't care who the speaker is going to be. What they want is a Congress who's actually going to do something. Jack, is he right? Does it really matter who the next House Speaker will be? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think he's. I think Christie's about 80 percent right. I don't look for this to have any impact on the presidential campaign. I mean, some say it, oh, it, it uh, reinforces the trend toward anti-establishment candidates, so in that regard it helps Trump. Some say it reinforces the trend toward a still more conservative party, uh, so in that sense it helps our friend Ben Carson. Uh, some say, you know, there, there's all kinds of allegations. I think Christie is largely correct uh, that this has very little to do with the 16 race. Let me tell you why it does matter. Yeah. Uh, in 2011, the Republican Party shut down the government, threatened to default on the national debt. Standard and Poor's lowered our rating from the highest rating to the second highest rating. Frankly, we had the, the, the most likely going to recession that we've had since the great Bush recession of 2008, all because of Republican politics. Americans don't care. Well, remember, Mark, though, we don't want to raise, we don't we we raise the debt close, every year, Mark. We don't want to raise the debt every year until default, we become Italy. Remember, we come we, close to default. It's easy to say that. Economic Just disaster. to digress. I don't want to digress, but it's easy to say that, but we can raise the debt every year until we become Spain and Italy. Remember that. I just want my 401k to do all right so I'm not here at 95. <laughs> then you don't want the government <laughs> shut down more. All right, let's switch gears. Republican presidential candidate Dr. Ben Carson continues to hold on to second place in the polls, but his latest book is drawing criticism. In it, he links stricter gun laws to the Holocaust. This is what he said when asked to clarify. If there had been no gun control uh, laws in Europe at that time. Would six million Jews have been slaughtered? I think the likelihood of, of Hitler being able to accomplish his goals would have been greatly diminished if the people had been armed. Because they had a powerful military machine, as you know, the Nazis. I, under I understand that. They could have simply gone in, and they did go in and wipe out whole communities. But you realize there was a reason that they took the guns first. All right, Carson also had trouble earlier this week discussing the debt limit during a radio interview and on questions of President Obama's religion. His supporters say he's not a politician and that's why he should be president. Jack, is he a viable candidate for your party? What's your take on all of the comments? Oh, I, I think he is viable. I think he's getting better and better. I think he's exactly right about Hitler and the Nazis. I mean, the first thing, it's not just Hitler, it's Stalin, it's Mao and China, it's a lot of dictators. The first thing any authoritarian, terrible ruler does is to collect up the guns. Long before Hitler thought about oppressing anybody, his first thought was to get all the weapons out of the society. A any government, for its own purposes, wants to take guns away from the citizens so the capital becomes stronger. I think that's a fact. There you I, do, go, Mark. I, I do not think Ben Carson is a serious candidate. He has compared the Affordable Care Act to slavery. He has said that gay people uh, choose to be gay and, and come out of prison gay. He said that when he himself had a gunman approach him, he sent him off to kill someone else. This is a loose cannon. And really, I, I don't know what Hitler that he thinks is going to happen in the United States of America, but what he does do is he builds on fear. And that's something the Republican Party no, is no, doing I, more and more. A, I, They're building on fear right, and emotion and right prejudice. About, and and that's frankly why we have You're right Trump. about 10 percent of that, Mark, but he's not building he's not building on fear at all. Carson is, look, yes, there's no Hitler on the horizon, but here's his point. There's no Stalin on the horizon. There's no Mao on the horizon. But the point is we don't want government to be so big and so uncontrollable that if you ever do have one of these people in power, it's just a short two-step punk away Tanks from setting up a terrible guns. dictatorship. The government has nuclear warheads. I don't think your AR-15 is going to defeat the United States military and no rational person does it. Well, then we should be allowed to buy tanks. What do you well, think Well, you know, that right. would be the logical thing. Why not nuclear bombs? A tank Why not every... give mentally ill people nuclear warheads? Oh, a tank boy. in every garage. Okay. All right. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton made a break from the Obama administration on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's a bill that Hillary had championed as Secretary of State. Now she says she's against it, causing a reaction from other Democratic candidates. Wow, that's a reversal. Uh, I was against the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, uh, months and months ago. I'm glad that she reached that conclusion. This is a conclusion that I reached from day one.
All right, Mark, you're the Democrat. What do you make of her changing course? Well, I'm also glad she reached the conclusion. Look, there's a difference between being inside government and being outside government. Inside government as a Secretary of State, she had to defend this. Now, in her defense, it wasn't decided yet. The exact details weren't known until just this week. And so she could fairly say, I haven't seen them yet. Once she's seen them, she knows that, well, let's face it. <laughs> oh, they, my goodness. I, 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 let me say this. I have no problem oh. personally with the TPP to the extent that we have trade with industrialized nations like Japan and Singapore. That makes a lot of sense to me. But when you bring in Malaysia, when you bring in Vietnam, when you bring in countries that can undercut American workers, I have a problem with it. Jack, so if she Hillary. becomes president, you know mm. what? You know how this the old rope a dope. She'll come back around and support it if she becomes president. Oh, of course. I, I'm numb to it. Mark, you should be her spokesman. You're, you're a truly great pundit. You spun that better than she could dream of spinning it. She should get rid of her whole team and hire you. I'm numb to it, uh, Morris. The Clintons changed their position. It's just like what he did with gay marriage. I mean, they've changed their position back and forth. They put their finger up in the wind. Whichever way the wind's blowing, she's got a strong wind from the left. So yeah. she says, oh my goodness, now, we, uh, now we're opposing free trade. The unions are, uh, the unions are worried. Uh, Bernie Sanders is gaining ground. I mean, this thing's turning into Look, a circus. It depends on the day and the time, I know. All right, the first Democratic debate is set for this upcoming Tuesday. And up until now, we haven't seen any mudsling or personal tax from the candidates. Mark, could we see more aggressive comments now? I hope not. I'm very proud of my party. When Hillary Clinton runs, she doesn't say anything bad about any of her opponents. She says why she should be president. Bernie Sanders does the same thing. They, they try all the time to get him to say something negative about Hillary. He does it. He says, let me tell you why I'm a good candidate. I'm proud of my party in that respect. What a contrast with the Republican Party where they can't wait to destroy each other. Uh, I hope they keep it up. Let me right. tell you what's going to happen though next week. This is the first time in the career of either Bill or Hillary Clinton where the media will not be on their side in a debate. This is the first time the media, the establishment media, the networks, the New York Times, the Washington Post, everybody's going to be kind of cheering for Bernie. No, they weren't on They're his side be cheering with for Obama. Bernie. No, no, the media was not on Hillary Clinton's side versus Barack Obama. Barack Obama was the newcomer. He was exciting. If, if anything, they were on his side. All She's right. used to that. Let's watch. We'll know next week when we all get together. And before we go now, let's talk about Donald Trump stepping up his feud with Republican presidential candidate Marco Rubio. The Donald sent the Florida senator a care package, including this, a pack of Trump ice natural spring water. The gift was a jab at Rubio's embarrassing water gaffe as he delivered the GOP State of the Union response in 2013. Mark, good-natured fun, or is it more evidence that Trump's a bully? No, I thought that actually was good-natured fun. I thought that was pretty funny. I think uh, it's a nice thing to attack Marco Rubio on, uh, and it's it's perfectly fair. I had no problem with it. Jack, you think that's all right? Or oh, I think it's good-natured fun. I think it's classic Trump, but I think it, it's also evidence Rubio on the rise. Trump now thinks he's a serious contender. I agree with that. He's, he's a thirsty guy. Is he going to have time? Here, here it comes. Here it yep, comes. Up, 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 just up, out of camera. Up. All right. All right, his thirst is quenched. Our thirst for knowledge is quenched during this I'm going to reach for mine. Okay. <laughs> Jack Morris. Berkman, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. The best political panel on TV. Have a drink, and thanks to you both. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. We turn to Afghanistan.